The Enma project was released back in September 1997. And since then it has become one of the most famous reconnaissance auditing tool available to map your network. It was the star of many films, one of them is The Matrix, the well-known Matrix. Over the years, Nmap has been available for various platforms, Linux, Mac, Windows, and has kept updating the tool with new capabilities such as the Nmap scripting engine. NSE. Let's move over and see how we can download and set up Nmap for the first time. The first place to visit is nmap.org website where we can find the packages and executables for the different platforms. Download and extracting Nmap is simple. If you don't have a Linux machine and you wish to play with the Linux machine as Nmap was born on Linux, the first thing you can do is to move over to the VirtualBox website download VirtualBox or any other virtual machine environment and install whichever distribution of Linux that you wish to play with. Here we can see that I've used Nmap in Ubuntu. Set up your machine with the relevant interfaces and the amount of memory that you will need. Just Open the CLI tool, the terminal, click Nmap, and you will be prompted with the link to download Nmap, which is the sudo apt install and so on. You can also download Kali Linux. Kali Linux is a distribution of Linux that comes embedded with all the penetration tools that you can just dream of. One of them is Nmap. There is also the macOS DMG package which you can download. Throughout this course I will teach Nmap reconnaissance using the Mac terminal. And last we have Zenmap. Zenmap is Nmap's GUI interface which we will not use in this course, but it is a very simple and effective tool when you don't want to get into the nitty-gritty of Nmap's options. The first thing, the very first thing you need to do when you launch Nmap is to press the Enter key and see the different options. As you will see, there are different options for host discovery, scan techniques, port specification, which ports are to be used, service version detection, which is very important to know which version is the service on the different ports. There are different scripts that we will learn later on how to use them. It is a powerful tool. OS detection. You need to know which operating system runs on different clients in your network. Timing and performance. Timing is an issue when you have firewalls and intrusion detection systems. If you want to evade firewalls, you will use different timing techniques. Make your scan slower or faster. There is a specific part that is dedicated for firewall evasion. Output. When you scan for dozens and hundreds of computers, you need to output the results into different files. You can save them to a text file, to a grappable file, or to an XML file. You have all the options set up here. And in the end, you have several examples that will make your initial start with Nmap quite easy. To fully understand how Nmap works, we need to understand how a TCP connection 
is being established, in particular the three-way handshake. The three-way handshake is our host's way to negotiate other hosts in the internet and start a connection. It happens in the following way. Our host sends a TCP SYN packet, SYN as in synchronize. Host B receives the SYN packet and sends back a SYN ACK packet, a synchronized acknowledgement packet. Host A receives the SYN ACK packet and sends back the ACK packet, the acknowledgement packet. Host B receives it and the connection is established. During the exchange of the SYN packet and the SYN ACK packet, in the TCP header there are different flags that are set in a bit value of 1 or 0. So when a TCP SYN packet is sent, the SYN flag is set to 1. And when the SYN ACK packet is sent, the SYN and the ACK flags are set to 1. And that is one of Nmap's most powerful features. We can set the different flags in the TCP header to 1 or to 0, the same way as we turn on or off our light bulb. The TCP three-way handshake, the TCP connection, is targeted towards ports, hopefully open ports, with different services that are bound to them. Services as HTTP, port 80, and services as SSH on port 22. Firewalls, whose main role in life is to protect your network from malicious packets, will decide based on its rule set whether the packet that arrives will be dropped, rejected, or accepted. There could be four states to port scanning. The first one is open. Open means that the application on the device, on our target device, listens to packets arriving to that port. The second one is closed ports, which means that no application is listening on that specific port. Usually when we send a probe to that port, it responds with a reset packet. The third state is filtered. Filtered means that a firewall or an IDS is blocking the port as part of its rule set. Nmap cannot determine whether the port is open or closed. And the fourth state is unfiltered. Unfiltered is when Nmap's probe gets a response, but it cannot determine whether the port is open or closed. There are two ways to close a TCP connection. There is the normal way, using the fin flag, and there is the rough way, using the reset flag. In the first scenario, the normal way that TCP closes a connection, host A sends a TCP packet with the fin flag set. Host B receives the fin packet and enters a stage which is called a close wait. It actually releases resources before he can close the connection safely. When the close wait state finishes, host B can now send a fin packet to host A and waits for its acknowledgement. Host A can now send the acknowledgement and host B finally can close the connection. That is the normal way that a TCP connection is terminated. But there is another way. Whenever you want to terminate the connection for many reasons, system resources are busy, one site is broken, or any other reason, host A can just send a reset packet. 
a TCP packet with the reset flag set. In that way, it actually say, I'm not interested in the full process. I just want to terminate the connection. And that is exactly what Nmap is doing in many advanced scan techniques. It sends out a TCP SIM packet as part of the three-way handshake. It receives the SIM act and then it sends out a reset packet terminating the connection. Host discovery is probably the first step in any penetration test. We need to know which hosts are accessible, which hosts are alive in the network. We will use the ping sweep option hyphen s with an uppercase p to send out ICMP pings and TCP packets with the ACK flag set. How can Nmap tell if the host is alive? Well, if the host sends back an ICMP echo reply, if it answers to our ping or sends back a TCP reset packet, then it is alive. Let's see what happens. I will ping my own private home network. Let's see which hosts are alive. All right, so we can see that there are six hosts that are up. When you use the ping sweep, you don't actually scan for open ports. You only scan to see which hosts are alive. That was rather easy. Now let's think about it. Most offices have firewalls firewalls which are stateful so a stateful firewall is a, is a firewall that won't permit any outside connection unless it was requested from the inner network it checks out to see if the tcp packet with the ACK flag set is part of an established connection if not he will drop it. The only way around is to customize our TCP ping. That's on the next lecture. Nmap scan is all in the details. In times you have to be conservative and make sure that every probe that you sent out will come back safely. One of the options is the maximum RTT timeout. RTT stands for the round trip time, the time it takes for our probe to get to our target device and back to us. Let's give it a try. Let's ping one of the sites in the internet, see what is the RTT time, and decide which maximum RTT timeout will we use. Let's start by pinging a website that is located in Sudan. Let's ping it. We can see that the round trip time is between 70 to 75 milliseconds. So now that we know that we have a bit of latency to that site, and if things get worse and the network get congested, the RTT will probably even be bigger. We'll use the maximum RTT timeout hyphen hyphen max hyphen RTT hyphen timeout and we will use 250 milliseconds as we want to be on the safe side. We will also set the initial RTT timeout to 150 milliseconds. It is twice than the RTT that we are witnessing, but we want to be conservative on that.
sorry for that I forget to add the millisecond it is currently in second it would last forever let's fix it out we are actually optimizing our scan taking in concern the latency the RTT the round trip time that we witness between us and our target device. We stated earlier that an, the SP option where we ping sweep our network sends a TCP packet with the ACK flag set and an ICMP echo ping. Most firewalls will drop the TCP packet with the, with the ACK flag set as it is unnatural. So the first thing to do is to customize our TCP pin and set the scene flag instead of the ACK flag. We do it like that. We use the nmap command, the same SP option, and then we add the PS option that turns up the TCP packet into a TCP packet with the scene flag. And let's add the IP address of our network with the subnet. All right, so we got seven hosts that are alive. TCP, as we know, comes from a, a random source to an, a known source as port 80. We can also change, when we customize our TCP ping, we can also change the source of our TCP packet. Let's see. We'll use the nmap command, same SP, the same PS option. Same network, but this time it all comes out from, from port 22, from an SSH port. All right, now this time, it seems as if another host was revealed. But as you recall, we are not only sending TCP pings, we also send ICMP echo requests. And these are also getting blocked by firewalls these days. What can we do? We will look at it in our next lecture. When Nmap tries to solve hosts to discover hosts in the network, it uses ICMP messages, but they are being blocked by firewalls and routers these days. Instead, we can use other types of pings, such as a TCP packet with the SYN flag set, the ACK flag set. It even uses the ARP protocol the address resolution protocol which every host must obey and respond back. Let's see all three in action. The first option hyphen with an uppercase P and S which is the TCP scene ping is used using root privileges so we'll use sudo command will target my own network, my own gateway. The same flag is set and I receive the following report which actually mentions there are five ports open. The second way is to use a TCP ping with the ACK flag set. We'll also use the sudo command and let's target you know what let's target the insecure.org All right, 
we've received the report that mentions that there are seven ports open in insecure.org. The next type of ping is my favorite. It's the R ping, the address resolution protocol pin, which every host in the network must obey. ARP is used to find out the MAC addresses of hosts. But beware, it can only be used in your own internal network. We'll use this pseudo command as we are actually crafting the packet P PR hyphen with an uppercase P and an uppercase R and let's target my whole network the whole subnet and we got the results from our R ping we have six hosts that are up another way to look at the results of an R ping is to look for the ARP table that is available in every host as it is part of the encapsulation of a packet you need the IP address and you need the MAC address and if you don't know which MAC address belongs to each host you send an ARP request so we'll use this pseudo command nmap hyphen pr. Let's look at my own network again and let's wait for the result. And then we will look at the ARP table using the ARP hyphen a. And now let's use the ARP command, ARP hyphen A, and voila. We have all the hosts with their MAC addresses. So that is another way to check up for the results. We actually have, let's see how many hosts. We also have some multicast addresses, but the hosts in the 10 network we have 11 hosts, 10 hosts, great. One of the more convenient ways to scan multiple hosts is to put them down into a list, a text list, and then drop the file name into Nmap to do its work. Let's see how it works. We use the nano editor to open up a new file. We'll name it list of targets. And now let's add on the host targets that we wish to scan. I will add my own hosts for my internal network. Let's close the file. Let's check out if indeed all the hosts are in that file. Let's open again the list of targets text file. Now we'll use the option IL, which is in lowercase i and an uppercase L which tells Nmap to open the file list of targets. And yeah, well, it seems that only two hosts are up. Your host discovery should be organized. Organized in a way that you can review it later or share it with your colleagues. To do so, you can output the results into a file. 
Nmap lets you save your output as a grabbable file, a text file, or even an XML file. Let's see how it works. Let's start with the text file. We use the hyphen O N a capital N. Let's call our file host.txt and let's scan the network. All right, now let's open it with my favorite nano editor host.txt and it's there. Another way is to use the grappable file which uses the O and capital G. We will call it, um, let's call it live, live.txt and we will scan the same network. All right. Great. Now, since it is a grappable file, let's try to grab to find out which host has the FTP service running in port 21. So, live.host, live.txt, sorry. All right, so that's our answer. Host 10.0.0.30h, which is my Rakas access point, is the only host that runs the FTP service. Great. The third option is in the XML format, which later on can be read by any XML cursor. So we'll use the NMAP command the hyphen O and the capital X. Now let's Call it scan me dot XML. Just type in our network. Nmap is doing its thing, and if we want to read using the cat command. We can see the XML file in all of its glory. When we start to use Nmap, we have two options available. Craft our own packets with different flags set to on or off, or to use the three-way TCP handshake. Let's see it in action. This time we'll add the verbosity mode, which is hyphen V. We can see that we have started with the ping scan, nmap is discovering a host, and then it initiated the connect scan. The connect scan is the full TCP three-way handshake. It started with a SYN, a SYN ACK, and an ACK. The TCP connect scan is good unless you have root privileges, and then you can use other scans as the TCP SYN scan, AX scan, FIN scan, Christmas scan, and more. But be aware, TCP connect scan is much more noisier and firewalls will notice the full three-way handshake. When we use the TCP SYN packet, which is written as an hyphen S and an uppercase S, we actually connect only partially. We send the TCP SYN, we receive the ACK, SYN ACK from our remote target, and we send back the reset packet. Let's see it in action. To send TCP SYN packet, we have to have root privileges. So I'll use the sudo command. Now let's Send it towards my gateway. All 
All right, we've got our results. TCP scan is a stealth mode scan. You open the connection only partially. The TCP SIM scan is Nmap's default scan for good reasons. It is fast. It gives you a clear view whether the port is open, closed, or filtered, and it is less likely to be blocked by firewalls. Nmap can help us to find out if the target device is protected by a firewall or not. It does so using the TCP ACK packet, a TCP packet with the ACK flag set and a randomized sequence number. When it performs a TCP ACK scan, it will probe the target and look for a reset response. If it doesn't get the response, then it is considered a filtered or protected by a firewall system. If it does return a reset packet, then it is labeled as unfiltered. Let's look at it right now. To use the ACK scan, we need root privileges, so we'll use the sudo command. And the first target will be a host in my network. hyphen s with an uppercase a. All 1000 scan ports are unfiltered, so my host in my network is not protected by a firewall. Now let's target the Nmap website and let's see what are the results there. All right, we can see that all 993 ports are filtered, the host is behind the firewall, and the other ports, the, the other seven ports are probably due to rule set uh, that makes them accessible in the firewall. Other methods for port scanning includes the fin scan, where the fin flag set to 1, the null scan, where no flag is set to 1, all flags are 0, and the Christmas scan, which sets the urge flag, the PSH flag, and the fin flag to one, lighting the header like a Christmas tree. We can use those flags since when we scan a system that doesn't contain a scene, as in a TCP scene, or a reset, or an ACK bit, the outcome will result in a returned reset packet if the port is closed and no response if the port is open. Let's see it in action. We will start with the fin flag set. Its bit value is equal to 1. So we will use the nmap command with the sudo as we need root privileges hyphen s with an uppercase f all right and now we'll use the null scan hyphen s with an uppercase n Remember, null scan sets the flag's bit value to zero. Same result. And our Christmas tree scan hyphen s with an uppercase x. The Christmas scan has become popular since it is fast and 
as it bypasses stateless firewalls that usually block SYN packets. Nmap lets you craft your own TCP packet, and there always comes the question, when do I use the FIN flag, the ACK flag, the SYN flag? Well, there is no obvious answer. The advantage of a FIN scan or an ACK scan is that they can pass stateless firewalls that are configured to block SYN packets. I will recap as it is important. By using other flags rather than the SYN flag, we can penetrate most stateless firewalls that are configured to block the SYN packet. Though, in some cases, the outcome will be open or filtered as Nmap doesn't know for sure if the port is open or closed, and the lack of response could also come from a firewall. So, final thoughts, use whatever combination that you find useful. Start with the SYN packet, move over to the FIN packet, try the Christmas packet, eventually you will succeed. Trust me. Nmap is the art of crafting your own TCP packets. We can make recipes based on the different flags and decide which flags will be set to 1 and which will be set to 0. The option is scan flags and we need root privileges to use it. So we'll use the sudo command nmap with a double hyphen scan flags. We'll use the insecure.org as our target device. And now we need to decide which parameters do we insert into our TCP packet. Let's insert the sin and the urge flag. And let's put on the insecure.org and let's see if it works. Not all combinations work well, but we need to try and see it. Some will help us to get through different systems. All right, that worked well. Scan flags option is a very handy option that I personally use a lot. Many of the services that we scan relies on the TCP protocol, but there are many other services that rely on the UDP protocol, which is a connectionless protocol aimed for real-time applications. UDP scanning is slow. I mean slow. Since open and filtered ports typically don't respond, and Nmap keeps trying and trying and sending his probes again and again. We can make UDP scan much faster with the maximum retries option, which we will do right now. UDP scan is done with the hyphen S and an uppercase U, we will target my own gateway, and we will use the maximum retries option, hyphen hyphen, max hyphen retries, and we will do it only once to make it faster. All right, we got our host that is up and two ports that are open, port 53, which is the DNS port, and port 137. When we get the results from an MAP port scan, regular port scan, the first logical thing 
to do is to look up at the services and their version. Everyone knows that port 22 is SSH port. That port 21 runs the FTP service. Port 80, HTTP service. But which web server runs on port 80? Is it Apache web server or another? Which FTP service runs under port 21? It is important since different service version reveals vulnerabilities. Service version detection can be obtained using the hyphen S and an uppercase V. And let's target nmap.org. All right, we're done. We can see that the host is up. It runs SSH 2.0 on port 22, and the web server is an Apache web server version 2.4.6, and we can check easily through the CVE website if there are any exploits or vulnerabilities. We can also configure the intensity of the scan. The more intense, the more time it takes. We can configure it from zero to nine. For that, we will use the hyphen hyphen version hyphen intensity, and we will use the value of seven as it is Nmap's default intensity. We will target the nmap.org website. It took us 39 seconds, 10 seconds more than our previous scan. Now let's run the same scan, but much faster, with service intensity with a value of 2. All right, it took us 25 seconds, less than the other scans. I would suggest stick with Nmap's default intensive scan, which is in the value of 7. One of Nmap's strongest features is OS detection. It is always useful to find out which operating systems runs on different machines in your network. Together with service detection, that service that runs on different ports, it is very helpful to find out exploits that are available and you need to patch them. OS detection is done using several probes that are being sent towards our machine. The response to each probe by the target machine helps us to determine the operating system type. Before we move on to the command itself, to the option itself, let's look at the detection process. How does it happen? Well, it seems that Nmap uses different types of probes. Each probe may consist of several packets, and the response to each one by our target machine 
helps us to determine the operating system type using a fingerprint database that Nmap already has. The five different types of probes are sequence generation probe, which consists of six packets, which are all TCP SIM packets, ICMP echo request probe, other types of probes are TCP with different flags that are set, and UDP probes. So let's use the OS detection option and analyze the results. The first thing to do is to ping sweep my network and see which hosts are up. All right, so let's pick up a target, the 10.0.0.7, and let's see which operating system does it run. For OS detection, we will use the hyphen and an uppercase O. We will also use the sudo command as it requires root privileges. All right, it was fast and correct. Device type, it's a phone, it's an Android phone, it's my kid's smartphone. And Nmap also gives us the special variant of Android, which is Cyano mode. In every modern office, there are firewalls and even intrusion detection systems that prevents tools like Nmap from entering the network. But Nmap uses different techniques to evade firewalls. Let's see some of them in action. The first technique, which is the decoy scan, used with an hyphen and an uppercase D, will make our target device believe that it is being scanned for multiple IP addresses. So we'll use the sudo command as it requires root privileges hyphen and an uppercase D, and then we'll use a decoy and our target device. So my decoy will be my gateway, which is the 10.0.0.138, and my target device that will believe that it got scanned from my decoy will be my access point, which is 10.0.0.38. We can also generate random spoofed IP addresses using the random command using RND and we can specify how many IP addresses will we use and let's target my gateway. Forget about the sudo. All right. Another technique is to change our source port. TCP generates a random port whenever it goes out to the internet. But we can craft our port source and make it a more common one so misconfigured firewalls will think that it is a legitimate TCP packet. G and let's make our source port 53. Two other techniques, interesting techniques, are the fragment option and the MTU option. 
The fragment option, we'll use the pseudo command, turns our packet into an 8-byte packet, a much smaller packet, that hopefully firewalls won't notice. So we'll use the, this smaller f, and our target will be uh, my gateway. All right. The second option, which is MTU, will let us craft our MTU, our maximum transmission unit, which is actually the same as the fragment option, but it allows us more customization. So we'll turn our probe into a 16-byte packet and target the same host. We got the pseudo command. Yep, it did its work. We are continuing with the evading firewall techniques, and the next technique is the data length. Nmap transmits probes which are in a very specific size known to many firewall vendors. The data length option actually adds an amount of additional data, so it will seem as if it is not coming from Nmap scan. Let's see how we do it. So we use the Nmap command, double hyphen data length, and now the parameter is the amount of bytes that we wish to add to the packet itself. Let's add another additional 10 bytes. And let's send it to our host target. The next technique is one of my favorite. It allows us to spoof our MAC address. Our layer 2 MAC address can be spoofed so the target device could not link the scanning host MAC address with the original one. We'll use the nmap command with a double hyphen spoof dash MAC and now we can specify uh, which MAC address we wish to generate or generate a random one. Let's generate a random one with the zero parameter. And let's target our host. It was very quick. As you can see, it didn't there are no there is no registered vendor behind that random MAC address that nmap generated. I could also use a generated MAC address that belongs to one of the known vendors as Dell, Apple, Microsoft, and so on. When it comes to seeing behind the scenes, what is exactly happening when we ping our target device, when we port scan them? Nmap gives us many options, we'll focus on three. The debugging option, the verbose option, and the reason option. Let's start with the verbose option using the hyphen and the lowercase v. Let's target my gateway. We can see that since we didn't use the pseudo command, the sport scanning was done using TCP connect and our ping was a regular ping. Now let's try to do the same but with root privileges and the same verbosity mode. We can trigger more verbosity, but we will stick with the 
simplest one using one uppercase lowercase v and now we can see that the ping is an R ping and that the port scanning was done using TCP SYN packet. A stealth mode scan. We've sent the TCP SYN, the target device returned a SYN ACK and we returned a reset packet. And now we'll use the reason option, hyphen hyphen reason and this time we'll target CNN.com. All right, we've got our results. Port 80 is open, port 443 is open. And beside the port, the states and the service, we have a new tab, a reason tab, that tells us that the reason we know that the port is open is because of a SYN act that was returned to us. And the last option is the debugging option which lets us debug the host discover using the ping and the port scan using the TCP packet with the hyphen D, the lowercase d. And we have tons of information and that is using the default debugging mode. You can trigger different debugging levels from 1 to 9. Nmap's most powerful feature is a scripting engine. The idea is simple. Write down or allow users to write scripts and perform network tasks. It is written in the Lua language. We will not learn how to write scripts, but we will learn how to use them, mostly in discovering the network. Using NSE, Nmap Scripting Engine, is simple. You just use the hyphen hyphen script and then choose your own script to execute. And there are many categories for scripting. There is the authentication scripts, broadcast scripts, brute scripts, default scripts, there are the safe scripts, discovery scripts, which we will dive into. The exploit scripts, denial of service, lots and lots of scripts and scripts categories. There are many scripts that uses aggressive scanning techniques, which can cause harm to your target device. So use them carefully and always, always ask for a permission to scan your target system. Let's start. In the coming script, SNMP Win32 software, we will try to enumerate the installed software on my kid's computer using SNMP. We will start with the nmap command hyphen s and uppercase u snmp works on port 161 hyphen hyphen script equals snmp hyphen win32 hyphen software and my target is 10.0.0.19. It requires pseudo privileges, root privileges, so we'll add the pseudo command. Wow! All right, so we have, I believe it is all the software that is on my kid's computer. Even the 
the printer software Google Chrome Microsoft.net frameworks Office different flavors of Office from a pen tester's point of view this information is gold it is so valuable we all understand it but in real life we hardly see SNMP misconfigured in that way. But if that is the case, then you have done your job. Another great SNMP script is the SNMP SysDescript. SysDescript lets you extract system information about the host that you're targeting. Let's see it in action. So we'll use the sudo command again as we need root privileges hyphen s u same port 161 the snmp port hyphen hyphen script snmp hyphen sys script and the target device That's my kid's computer, it runs x86 processor family, which is an Intel processor. Windows 7, although it writes down Windows version 6.1, but it is Windows 7. SNMP is great. I just love that protocol. It allows you to gain so much information on your network devices, assuming they're using SNMP version 1 or version 2, and that the port is open. I found out that many printers, IP cameras, and other devices are still using SNMP version 1, version 2, and in that way actually gives you a door, a back door to their specs, to their network interfaces, users, so much information. The next SNMP script will tell us which interfaces, network interfaces are used in my kid's computer. So we'll use the same sudo command nmaps hyphen su port 161 hyphen hyphen script snmp hyphen interfaces so simple and the host target all right we can see that my kids computer is using a TP-Link wireless card, wireless USB card. This is so valuable. SNMP can give us so much information on the user's system hardware interfaces. It can tell us so many things on the network and its vulnerabilities. Our first script will deal with SNMP. How to find users using SNMP protocol. What is an SNMP? Well, it stands for Simple Network Management Protocol. It is used to monitor and configure devices on the network. There are three main components to SNMP. The first one, the SNMP Manager, that is the server side that communicates with agents, with clients in the networks queries them and get responses from them. The second component is the SNMP agent, which is the client itself that you want to query or manage. It could be just about any device from computers to switches and routers, IP cameras to huge servers, printers, just about any networking device. The third component of SNMP is the MIB. The MIB is the Management Information Database. 
a database that declines in the agent itself, in the client itself, which contains data points that lead to specific information on that device, such as DSCAR PM, network status, amount of users, even device temperature. Usually, the MIB is provided by the device manufacturer. The data points that lead to the MIB itself are called OIDs, Object Identifier. They are in the form of strings and numbers, and when you query an SNMP agent, you actually send him an OID, an OID request. SNMP comes in different versions. The first one and the second one, version 1 and version 2, comes with no security at all. They come with what is known as a community string, which is like a password, but it is broken. So let's see how we can query our agent using SNMP. And our first script will try to find users that are registered on the computer. So we'll use the Emma command, but this time with an hyphen S and a U since SNMP is, runs on the UDP protocol. SNMP is port number 161. So let's check out and see if it's, if my computer, which is on 10.0.0.19 supports SNMP. I'll add the sudo command and yep, it supports SNMP. So we'll add the hyphen SV, the version number. All right, it runs SNMP on my computer, which all right, so it's the SNMP version 1. Great. So it's SNMP without any security at all. The next script will try to enumerate users, Windows users, that are registered on the computer. So we'll use the sudo command. And again, we will use the SU as SNMP runs on a UDP port, port number 161. And then the double hyphen script, and the script is SNMP hyphen win32 hyphen users and the host that we wish to query. And we've got an answer. These are the registered users on that specific computer. The NetBIOS protocol is an old protocol that is still used to provide communication between devices and applications in the local area network. In a NetBIOS network, devices locate and identify each other with their NetBIOS names. Devices access the NetBIOS names over the UDP protocol using port 137. And we will use a script that will allow us to get our device NetBIOS name. We'll use the sudo command as it requires root privileges and then the nmap command following by hyphen s and uppercase u. Remember NetBIOS is a UDP protocol. 137 hyphen hyphen script nb stat dot nsc. And now the port number 137 and our target will be 10.0.0.19 which is my kids computer let's see if it works out all right no it doesn't reply back with the netbios name let's try another target this time let's try my gateway
And yes, it grabbed its name, Bezek. One of the most useful and used protocols in your local area network is the SMB, the server message block. SMB is used by application devices to share files between them. SMB works over TCP IP on port 445. We will see it very soon. The SMB protocol uses an exchange of messages between the client and the server. They negotiate between them using the SMB protocol. The client logs to the server, connects to one of his shares, opens a file in the share itself and reads the file. There are different flavors to SMB. There's the SMB version 1, version 2 and version 3. I know that my gateway, my router, supports SMB over port 445. Let's try to see which version is supported and then we'll use a script that will enable us to catch information as computer names, NetBIOS names and more through the SMB protocol. Alright, so the first thing to do is to see if the port is open and let's try to find out which version is run. So we'll use the nup command hyphen s and an uppercase v for the service version. SMB runs on port 445, so we'll mention it. And let's use the 10.0.0.138, which is my gateway, my router's IP address. All right, it runs version three. Now let's use this script that will allow us to get more, to gain more information using the SMB protocol. All right, so use nmap hyphen hyphen script SMB hyphen OS hyphen discovery dot NSC and our target is my gateway and let's see which fields are grabbed using the SMB protocol hopefully we'll have lots of information And it gives us the system time, the computer name, the FQDN, the domain name. More SMB scripts are in the next videos. The next SMB script that we will use is the SMB enum shares. Enumerate the shares. We will try to find out shareable folders on my kid's computer, but it may be used just about anywhere in the organization. It is a good script since if we find out that there is a folder that is shareable and writable, a bad hacker could drop out a malicious code into that folder and infect it. The first thing is to check out if SMB is open. Let's try out my kids' computer. And since I know that it is up, I will try to scan the ports immediately without pinging. And yes, port 445, SMB port is open. And now let's start with a script. So the script is hyphen hyphen script SMB hyphen 
shares hyphen enum dot nsc and let's see if there are any shareable folders out there. Sorry for that. That should be enum shares. All right. Well, there's the okay. There's um, a shared folder with a promising name of family images, which is also a read and write folder. The folder is writable. The next discovery script will be the HTTP enum. This script will try to enumerate directories that are used in web servers, web applications, I know that my gateway runs an internal web server that is used for admin usage. Let's try it out and let's see if we can find directories that will respond. You're quite familiar with the drill. nmap hyphen hyphen script equals http hyphen enum and the target is my gateway. And let's add in the service version so we can see which web server runs on my gateway. All right. Okay, we can see the script results. We have a robots.txt file, robots file in the web directory. We have a help folder, which NMAP actually mentions that it is potentially interesting folder. We have a status folder. And the web server type is light httpd. Let's check out to see if it has any exploits known. My gateway runs light httpd version 1.4.35 and it seems that there is a vulnerability and the vulnerability has to do with the basic http authentication but there is a patch and the patch comes in in the next version which is 1.4.36. The next script DNS cache snoop is one of my favorites. Why? Because it is so smart simple. Let's understand what is a DNS. Whenever we launch our browsers and write down the website that we wish to visit, our browser that doesn't understand our language goes into a very special server, the DNS server, and asks him, can you translate the website address to an IP address? That's the way we route in the internet. That DNS server does two things. It tries to find out in its cache, is there a local copy of the website and then hand it to the browser? And if not, goes to another DNS server and asks him, please help me to get to that website. There are actually two types of DNS queries. The first one, recursive request. With a recursive request, our DNS server will try to find the website in its local cache. 
if he doesn't find one, he goes out and queries other DNS servers until he finds the address. It then will respond to the original request with the results. The second method, the iterative request, starts the same. He looks out in his local cache. If he finds one, great. If he doesn't, he doesn't go to another DNS server and ask him, but he will reply back to the original request to our browser saying, I don't know, but you could try asking another server. All right. So in our script, in our DNS cache snoop script, Nmap will actually try to query the 50 most popular domains against our DNS server, which is usually our gateway. And then it will do two things. It will measure the time difference between our request and the time that it gets to us. A cached DNS request will come faster than a normal DNS request, which is much slower. In that way, Nmap knows that our domain or the domain that it asks for is cached and not visited before. The second thing he does, it sends the DNS request with a recursion flag set to zero. And that will only be responded if the domain is cached on our DNS server. I hope that it's much more clear now and let's move to the script itself. All right, so we will need the sudo command as it requires root privileges hyphen s and an uppercase u since DNS runs on a UDP protocol port 53 hyphen hyphen script DNS hyphen cache hyphen snoop and then our target device which is my gateway that acts also as the DNS server. Oops, I forgot to write down the nmap command. Sorry for that. Let's fix it. Great. And now let's see which websites are in my cache. That's it. The DHCP protocol is used everywhere. It is the only way to allocate, to distribute IP addresses and other configuration which is not in the scope of this course to our host. A DHCP server provides IP addresses to DHCP client through a series of messages. And it works like that. There's the DHCP server, which holds out a pool of IP addresses, according to the subnet. And there's the DHCP client, the host itself. Whenever a DHCP client, a station, enters a network, he sends out a broadcast message that everyone can hear. It is the DHCP discover message, saying, is there a DHCP server out there in the network? If there is, the DHCP server sends back a DHCP offer containing the client's IP address. The client accepts the offer and sends back the DHCP request indicating acceptance of the offer. Our DHCP sends an acknowledgement and the client receiving acknowledgement configures its TCP IP properties by using the DHCP information that was sent to him. The script that we will use is the DHCP Discover script. Using that script, we can find out who is the DHCP server in our network. Is it a standalone DHCP server or maybe it's our own router? We can also find out is there maybe another ROG DHCP in the network. We'll use the sudo command as it requires root privileges, the nmap command, 
DHCP runs on a UDP protocol, so it's S and hyphen S and the uppercase U, port 67. And there's the script, hyphen hyphen, script equals DHCP hyphen discover. And the host target, which in my case is my gateway. And the results are that it is it is my DHCP server. It also acts as my DNS server. Using that script, we have actually sent to our DHCP server another kind of message, which is the DHCP inform. It is a DHCP request that returns back useful information without allocating new IP address. The next script will be UPnP info. UPnP stands for Universal Plug and Play, and we will extract system information from the UPnP service that is found in many devices as routers, IP cameras, computers, and so on. But what is a UPnP? UPnP relies on the UDP protocol port 1900. UPnP's purpose is to allow devices attached to computers and networks and easily recognized. It works both on the wireless networks and the wired networks and supported by many operating systems and device manufacturers. So when a UPnP client attaches, connects to a computer or a network, it is immediately recognized. It is done in several steps. First, there is the discovery process. Whenever a UPnP-capable device joins a network, he wants to know which UPnP services are available. And so he sends a discovery message to a multicast address on port, yep, you've guessed it, 1900 via the UDP protocol. The other UPnP devices that are on the network are required to respond to that message with a similar message announcing which UPnP profiles do they implement. Every profile offers descriptions of the device and the services it offers and makes it available using XML. Devices that respond send a notification or a message with a header that is called location. Location is actually a URL where the other UPnP device can find the XML file which they can download and learn of the devices in the network. Another step in the UPnP negotiation is the control step, where a device, a UPnP device, asks another UPnP device to perform an action on its behalf. That kind of functionality happens in devices that implement a DLNA server and acts as media streamers and renderers as many TVs that supports UPnP act. In our coming script, we will act as a UPnP client, asking another UPnP client, which is actually my access point, for its services through the XML file. All right, so we'll use the nmap command hyphen s and an uppercase u since it runs via UDP protocol. The port number is 1900 hyphen hyphen script equals upnp hyphen info and the target device will be my access point. And as always, I forgot to add the sudo command as it requires root privileges.
All right, and what do we have here? Well, it is a UPnP supporting device. It runs Linux. The name of the device is R500, which is an access point from Ruckus Networks. It runs firmware number 200.6.10.1, which is not the latest firmware, but one of the latest. And we can see that the location, we can see that the location of the XML file is, that's the URL, is at 10.0.0.6 port 80 upp.jsp. And it also gives us the MAC address and the vendor identifier. Now let's take a look at the location file itself using the URL. Let's type the address 10.0.0.6 port 80 slash upnp.jsp and here we have it.